Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Not Just New Movies podcast, the show where we review a seemingly random film currently not in theaters. My name is Ben Pearson, and today we're going to be talking about Walter Murch's 1985 film, Return to Oz. Joining me is my regular co-host, Tyler. How's it going, man? Ben, Not Just New Movies has returned, which means we have to watch all the movies ever made with the word return or returns in the title. I don't know about all the movies ever made because we might <laughs> well, be here forever. But uh, but yes, as you mentioned, it's NJNM The Return. This is a new uh, mini series, I guess, that yeah, we're doing. We five, uh, one to ten episodes. We don't know for sure yet. Yeah, so this is the second one. So definitely two to ten episodes, maybe, <laughs> of uh, of movies that only have the word return in the title. And today we're going to be talking about Return to Oz. If you guys are just joining us for the first time, welcome. You can listen to all of our back episodes at njnmpodcast.blogspot.com. And uh, you can leave us a voicemail if you want to at 904-469-6566. Or email us at notjustnewmovies at gmail.com. So, Tyler, let's just, you don't have anything in the T spot for this uh, episode, the do you? I've been playing a lot of Zelda Breath of the Wild that beat Ganon, but I've gone back to try to beat all the shrines. But that's a whole other thing. That's a whole other podcast. All right. We'll I'm, talk hoping, about I'm that. hoping to log at least 100 hours into that game. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So, let's jump into Return to Oz. <laughs> This summer, Walt Disney Pictures presents a motion picture fantasy adventure beyond your fondest imagination. You'll be transported miraculously back to the enchanted land of Oz, that magical kingdom beloved by young and old for generations. It's just a yellow brick. No, Belina, you don't understand. This was the yellow brick road. You'll share with Dorothy Gale the shock of finding everything mysteriously changed. What's happened to everybody? And you'll delight with her discovery of four wonderful new friends who band together against a wicked queen and the dreaded Gnome King. This is the Oz you haven't seen before. And this is the Oz you'll want to visit again and again. From Walt Disney Pictures comes a whole new world of entertainment. Why don't we just fly back to Kansas? Return to Oz. I had never seen this movie before. Okay. Uh, what was your relationship with this film uh, uh, beforehand? Much, much like this movie itself, my childhood it now feels like a fever dream. And I watched this movie as a child. And so some of the imagery has stuck with me for my entire life. Um, I want to say like preteen, maybe even as a teenager, I watched it again, like just mm-hmm. once. And it was one of those rare movies where it could maybe be at the video store, but you had to go to the right video store to find it. Like it was that rare to find. Um, mm-hmm. And so just now, uh, 20 years later, I suppose, um, I'm trying to, I watched it again and <laughs> Amazon claims it was directed by Disney himself, but uh, it's actually <laughs> Walter Murch. And yeah, it's just as feverish as ever. Um, But yeah, it was. I've had a long history with this movie. Uh, I've thought about it a lot. Is that weird? Yeah. Well, watching it, I've just thought about the movie Return to Oz. No, that's not weird because, especially if you saw this as a kid, I can imagine some of these images being completely burned into your memory in in such a disturbing way. I was shocked that this movie Uh was released. (laughs) <laughs> shocked because Dorothy almost gets electroshock therapy in the beginning of this movie hey. uh, that this movie was released by the Walt Disney company. Like yeah. this is, it, can you imagine Disney releasing something like this today? No, it just would cannot. not happen. Um, well, isn't and, this like before it's Renaissance where it was just like, it was like, just produce whatever, man, we need, we, we can't, yeah. get, we can't be sued for tax fraud, just pour money into whatever. I don't care. Yeah, very much. And this is this. Okay, so for people who have not seen Return to Oz, it's essentially a sequel to The Wizard of Oz, the classic 1939 movie. But this movie came out in 1985. It's set six months after the events of the first movie, the tornado wrecked Kansas. But Dorothy seems way younger for some reason in this version. Definitely. So but that's I don't really know why I love there. this movie is because it is a direct sequel to that film. Like it doesn't have any songs. It doesn't have any of like the look of it, but it mm-hmm. like for people who are, I guess, fan fanboys and fan girls that just love the wizard of Oz, like this should be like a diamond in the rough 
of like an actual film made a sequel to the one of the like the most recognizable movie ever made. Mm-hmm. I think that's yeah. amazing. As, as bad as it might be, I, I still think that is an amazing feat. Yeah, it's pretty damn incredible that this thing exists because it's such a weird movie, yeah. Tyler. This movie I know. is what so the bizarre. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, it really. So I had to watch it on YouTube because I knew that we were recording today, and I I watched it yesterday. Oh yeah, that's um, right. And so I watched a version on YouTube uh, that is, it was like the edges of the frame were cut off. Mm-hmm. So I was watching it like slightly zoomed in the right. whole time, which made it even more unnerving but because yeah. the center of the frame was not really where it was supposed to be. And like, so things were all like off kilter in an already off kilter world. Yeah. Uh, and I would not recommend watching any movie that way because no. it's a terrible experience, <laughs> but I just had to do it because we had a very limited time to record today. And this was the window that we had to take. So uh, there, it starts off with this horrifying imagery of this kid who's left in a psych ward and threatened with electroshock shock therapy. I, it made me wonder if Zack Snyder watched this before he came up with the idea for sucker punch. Did you ever see well, that movie? No, but that brings up an interesting point. There are a lot of tropes in this movie that I think have been done since 1985, which kind of begs the question of who who's been watching return to Oz and not telling (laughs) us. Yeah. Like what, what are you, uh, what did you notice? There was like some imagery. um, I should have wrote it down, but I want to say like a lot from the never ending story. Part two was in there. Mm, I want to say, um, Ah, you got you got me. <laughs> but there's definitely <laughs> there's definitely like three or four instances where it's like, oh well, that's a recognizable part of another movie that came way later. I think yeah. it might have like even the late '80s. I want to say um, where it was like, oh yeah, that's a thing, or that's a visual thing that I've seen. Um, mm-hmm. It's usually visual or maybe some kind of special effect. Yeah, that yeah. kind of yeah. like rock biter sort of things. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, the the gnome king sort of yeah. looks like that. Uh, that he's like a huge like sentient mountain or something. Right. Um. So yeah. So Dorothy arrives back in Oz with Belina, her talking chicken, yes. and I love that from the beginning of the movie. As as soon as she arrives. Uh, the gnome king, who's like the villain who's taken over the land of Oz, uh, his little minion is like, uh, you know, your majesty, she's arrived, but she has a chicken with her. And he's like, a chicken! And he like freaks out. And then it's never really mentioned until the very end of the movie. Right. But it's like, wait, what? Like, they're scared of chicken? What the fuck yeah, is yeah, going yeah. on in this movie? And then, of course, I'll jump all over the place in this recap. But at the very end, it's revealed that, like, they're, that chicken eggs are poison yeah. to to the gnome king <laughs> it's like that's the one thing that can take you down is a chicken well, egg i don't know it's, it's, it's us it's, it's a crazy world yeah oh, very... another, another one to mention that is when they have to go into the room of objects to find their friends yeah like that kind of had a last crusade feel to it oh yeah because yeah. uh he had to go and like pick the correct cup mm-hmm. um that's just another one by the way that popped in yeah mind. Yeah, definitely. So Dorothy, uh, she lands in in Oz and basically comes across the old house where she crushed yeah. the Wicked Witch of the East, which I thought was like a cool Easter egg. Pretty cool. Um, because a lot of the a lot of the characters that she interacts with in this movie look different than they mm-hmm. did in the original film, like uh, the Scarecrow, and like you get a, a very brief glimpse of the Cowardly Lion at the very end, and I right. think the Tin Man makes like a, a you know a <laughs> two second later. cameo. But it doesn't really look like the classic designs. Correct. Um, Which threw young Tyler for a fucking loop when he was a oh, kid. Oh, I'm sure. Where I'm yeah. like, wait a second. <laughs> yeah, and then you're like, wait, is TikTok supposed to be the Tin Man? Exactly. Because, like, what's going on here? But yeah, it's like a whole separate character. Right. Um, but but the, I thought they did a really good job creating the house because that looked yeah. pretty close to the real thing. Oh, okay. But the, the problem uh, comes immediately when she basically <laughs> gets to the house and she has Belina her chicken with her and then she gets to the emerald city in like five yeah. seconds yeah and it was like that was the entire that journey from there right. to there point a to b was the entirety of the first movie well, like, a little, little how... known dorothy's been uh conditioning for her soccer team so she's <laughs> she's really good at sprinting now oh man yeah six she months was... have been a, a savior she was hauling ass. So <laughs> as soon as she arrives there, she realizes that everyone has been turned to stone mm-hmm. except for these psychopaths 
with scary masks and super long arms and yeah. legs with wheels at the end of them. I oh, imagine yeah. this was one of the images that was burned into your brain as a kid. That and the claymation rock faces. Yeah. Yeah. Good well, these God things it. reminded me of the from the Dark Crystal Dark Crystal, the the monsters that kind of have these really long legs. But yeah. that was nineteen eighty two. So it kind of had a Jim Henson creature shop vibe to it, even though it was very much low production cost. Yeah, and Brian Henson, uh, Jim Henson's son, was one of the puppeteers and the voice of Jack Pumpkinhead in okay, this movie. So there's a cool. little bit of a connection there. And did you um, know the uh, TikTok was the voice of also Admiral Akbar? I did not. That's pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the, no, <laughs> I'll just believe it blindly yeah, please, uh, as please I do. want to do. Um, so, yeah, these gang members who who seem like characters from a clockwork orange or something are like mm-hmm. threatening to rip Dorothy into little pieces. I mean, this is like serious shit from the first few minutes of this movie. Um, this is not like a, a you know, you always talk about like uh, it's like an old man gingerly getting into a, a, a bathtub of warm water kind yeah, of thing. Like, yeah. I feel like you use that analogy a lot. This is like an old man cannonballing into, you know, a hot spring or something. Like, yeah. you're just um, immediately immersed in this WTF world. And they 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 don't care about uh, about watering it down and making it safe for kids. Like... They yeah. are just going all out with the imagery here, and I kind of admire the movie for that. It's really um, like a brazen, like a fu kind of thing to a lot of the kids' movies that were coming out around that time. Yeah, it's. I mean, a lot of movies, I guess, in our day were fairly serious for kids because you had parents taking kids to the theater, so you kind of had to make it a little interesting for everybody. But mm-hmm. yeah, this one, this one like pushes the envelope, and it kind of made me think if this had had just a little bit more money to kind of go the distance with production and set design and costumes, like just imagine how great it could look and how, how, again, I can't, I I can't uh, emphasize enough. Like this is a sequel to the wizard of Oz. (laughs) And and I I don't know why I find that so amazing, but it, it is like every turn is a reference to the the movie, which makes me think that Disney really, and I, I read a little bit about it. Disney really wanted the rights to the wizard of Oz. Like they just, they were trying to do it in the thirties and then they wanted it again decades later. So it's been on their minds for, for a long time, but just to have someone go, or to tell the director or the writer or whatever, you're going to make a sequel to the wizard of Oz. And it's like, okay, how much do I get? $11 million. Like, Oh my God, that's not enough to do anything close to the original. Yeah. And and it's 46 years later, by the way, too. It's like, (laughs) this is a long ass time between the first and the second movies in this series. It's totally nuts. It is. uh, It is something to behold. And as weird as it is, that's, that's what keeps bringing me back, man. It's like, if it, if it just had like a little more support and a little more money, like just imagine what it could have looked like and what it could have been. Yeah. I feel like I'm glad that I saw this because now I kind of want to like, it's one of those movies that if you get it on DVD or something, I feel like you could slip it into like the Christmas stocking of one of your friend's young children and really just like F them up from, you know, like introduce them to weird, weird stuff uh, pretty early on. I mean, it's not like an experimental movie, but it is, there is stuff in here that is like genuinely unsettling, even for me in my thirties to see this imagery. It's very Lynchian. It's a Lynchian child's tale. (laughs) Yeah, it really is. And like there, you know, there's this princess who like replaces her heads and she's got this snow white thing where she's like obsessed with youth and she wants to, to throw Dorothy in a, like a Rapunzel esque tower to age her up for a while so she can then behead her and then put wear her own head and like keep this youth thing going on there's like heads are screaming and dorothy's running through glass hallways and like yeah it's just like nightmare central all the way through um there's a flying couch in this movie for some reason i don't have no idea is that a character? I, I well, couldn't even tell I, if that was like a real character or not. I've been reading, and apparently and this is based on The Marvelous Land of Oz and Ozma of Oz, which I think are two of the 15 Oz books that have been written. And I've read that fans find this to be fairly, um, what is it, true to the true to the original 
mm-hmm. literature. Yeah, accurate. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so I guess at some point there is a couch <laughs> built with a moose head <laughs> on the front and there's life powder. And I, I guess because the kids and I just I guess kids get stuff like that. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, but yeah, that so- was one of the weirdest. I mean, TikTok. OK, I get it. Pumpkinhead, he looks like Jack Skellington. Another reference that we'd see later. Yeah, um, yeah, there you go. That reminded me of it. And then, yeah, all of a sudden, it's just this a bunch of crap put together, and there's your third character from Oz. Yeah. And so it's like, is this the Cowardly Lion? Is he now a couch with a, a loose head? I don't know. <laughs> this weird reindeer thing named Gump for some reason. And, Another reference. And he... <laughs> <laughs> forest couch <laughs> and uh yeah and he's like he's almost like the voice of the audience he's like oh boy this is not gonna work out <laughs> yeah. i don't know why i'm doing this <laughs> it's like wow so, he's actually pretty accurate uh, so i noticed that the, the gnome king attempts to actually teach dorothy a legitimate lesson yeah. in this movie he's, he's like if somebody steals something you should give it back yeah. and then she's like but you have so much. And he's like, that's not the point. Right. And it's like, oh, this movie is like actually trying to get at like something. There's like a real thing here it's, that it's trying to say. It's an ethical question because the emeralds, technically, they came from his domain. Right. They're, they're, yeah. Who's to say Native Americans and Europeans? It's their land first or it's their object first. And all of a sudden, you know, the Aussians come in and just swipe everything. But yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a cruel dictator, nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I uh, love it's like he wears the ruby slippers. He's like, those were mine too, and he's like twitching his feet around. <laughs> I literally, the next thing in my note was, homeboy is wearing Dorothy's <laughs> ruby slippers. Like, <laughs> what? This rock mountain yeah. can somehow wear them? I yeah. Did you th- like I mean, how that's he moved one of... from claymation to uh, human like live action form? Did you? No, no, I that? didn't. Oh. I thought that was weird. I would have. I would have preferred to see him stay claymation yeah. rock guy because that actually was like cool imagery. Do you think and then it was just like because that's what I think happened. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. I think so. That's a good point because yeah, like you were mentioning, the budget is like so low. Walter Murch, who is famously like an editor, I think he edited. Let me make sure that this is right. Uh, Just to debunk a few uh, things that I said, it was not the voice of Admiral Akbar, uh, okay. the voice of TikTok. Right. And also, Uncle Henry is not played by the actor who portrayed Gomez Adams in the original Adams Family <laughs> show. Just so you know. <laughs> All right. Yeah, good to know. Okay, so Walter Murch, uh, he is like one of the uh, longest running editors in movie history, I think. Mm-hmm. He he started in the late 60s and he worked on Apocalypse Now, The Godfather 1, 2, and 3, American Graffiti, The Conversation, The English Patient. He's won three Oscars um, from – and he was like nominated nine different times. I mean he is like – I think the, the quote was he's the most respected film editor and sound designer in the modern cinema. So this guy uh, – jumping over to uh to direct this project it seems like it was a passion project for him and i know that he fell behind during the production and he basically got fired and disney had to listen to francis ford coppola and george lucas to who like came in on merch's behalf and said like hey stick with this guy he'll do it for you and they eventually hired him back so yeah there there was a lot of behind the scenes uh troubles with this movie it sounds like and you can kind of see some of that in in the actual movie itself it it feels a little choppy at points yeah but uh but i think you know i admired the hell out of this movie for just being so uh just weird for lack yeah. of a better term i mean like the lynchian vibe it's uh, permeates this whole thing yeah it's, it's really like um a movie that does not care about coddling its audience and uh yeah i'm just, what, what do you think about this movie as an adult now well, other other trivia a large fee was paid to use the ruby slippers which were still the ip of mgm because in the original book it was silver slippers silver mm. shoes but everything else, all the books were in public domain. So TikTok, Jack Pumpkinhead, all these other mm-hmm. characters were, uh, yeah, just coming straight from the public domain, which I think is fascinating. Yeah, um, yeah. And so I don't, I don't know the the movie. How I feel about it now, it is exactly what I thought it was when I was a child. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Weird, which has got to be like an unsettling realization to come to. It's a little unsettling because I mean. I don't want to say I had nightmares, but I feel like a lot of my dreams as kids were shaped by like claymation and really weird things like this movie or um, Pee Wee Herman's 
uh, show and the claymation mm-hmm. in that show, like, and even the Muppets and Dark Crystal and Labyrinth and those kinds of movies, like, really kind of shaped how my brain worked. I suppose I don't know yeah. if that makes sense. But now I can kind of because I'm I've been watching movies my entire life. I can kind of say eh, production budget's low here, but I also don't try to forget what it would be like for a kid <laughs> yeah. to watch this movie and be like, you are going to either going to be fucked up or you're going to love movies one way or yeah. another. This movie's going to change your life. And yeah. uh, I just feel, I, I felt like it might've been made for TV because it just has that look to it. And I think, yeah, it does. Like if, if anything, that's probably what they were going for. Like if we can just get this made and put it into either television, like the Disney channel, which I think is where I originally saw it. And then, or get it on the, like the videotape circuit, like just make it into home video. They'd, mm-hmm. be, they'd make their money back. Um, yeah. So Disney is releasing a, uh, their own, uh, streaming service in 2019. That would be pretty amazing if they made this like one of their, you know, yeah. main titles, like, Hey, go, you know, come subscribe to this for 10 bucks a month. And you get to see things like return to Oz. Right. Like I just, that in would be, uh, def, yeah. completely reimagined. <laughs> Yeah, wow. I wonder what um, it would take. I wonder if there's a studio in your hometown now, or in Los Angeles, Hollywood, where the original like 35 millimeter or whatever oof, is wow. hanging there, and they're just like, "Fuck, Return to Oz. We're never going to remake that." But it's just, I hope it didn't like burn in like the Phantom of the Opera set fire. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. There have been so many fires in Hollywood history where stuff like that has been lost to the ashes of time. But yeah, I, I really hope that it's out there and somebody finds it and maybe like starts taking it around, like touring it around the country yeah. so people can see uh, in like a an art house theater or something the yes. original print of <laughs> Return to Oz. That would be pretty awesome. And if so, you're going to do that, please invite us so we can do a podcast afterwards because I want to take questions from the audience. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, so speaking of taking questions from the audience, you guys can email us at notjustnewmovies at gmail.com with any questions that you might have uh, call and leave us a voicemail at 904-469-6566 if you want to leave us a question or a comment or anything like that that way that would be great you can hit us up on twitter at njmm podcast uh tyler normally in the earlier editions of the not just new movies podcast we would bust out this thing called the not just pneumatic movie tube that yeah. randomly chose what movie we were going to be watching next uh i don't think we're doing that because nope. as, as we mentioned we're only going to be talking about movies with the word return in the title for this uh, particular mini series which could be the final batch of not just new movies uh episodes ever yeah. we don't know due, um, due to low popular demand we're yeah. running out of ideas we're running <laughs> out of our, reboots our own busy schedules yes uh so i don't even know what we're going to be talking about next time should we just leave it a mystery until we record again because we're sort of recording in little snatches throughout the year and then hopefully (laughs) releasing these (laughs) releasing these in uh in maybe like one big burst or something but um but as of right now you and i have no idea what we're going to be talking about unless you want to make an executive oh, decision no. and just call it right now. Absolutely not. But be sure to uh, subscribe to the Not Just a Movie show on iTunes and perhaps Stitcher or through uh, a podcast app of your choice. Yes. And a, a new episode will definitely just show up there. So make sure you're subscribed and keep on uh, keep up with us on Twitter and all that stuff. But uh, I think I might put I might drop a few of these on YouTube and in the Fivecast feed uh, just to Sweet. get everybody together on the same page. But yes, we will definitely return someday probably in a month with another movie with the word return in the title. Let us know which one yes. you, you think we should watch. And in the meantime, uh, where can people track you down online? Tyler? On Twitter or at Alan Traherne or at the five cast. And of course, a couple of upcoming shows possibly in the future, a perilous journey and uh, from Crota quest uh, where I try to watch every single movie made between the years of 1994 and 1996. <laughs> That's really going to be amazing if you're <laughs> able to pull that off. Uh, my name is Ben. You can find me writing every day at SlashFilm.com. You can hear me on SlashFilm Daily, which is the daily podcast that they have over there. You can find me on Twitter at Ben Pears. And yeah, definitely reach out to us. Let us know which movies with the word return in the title you would like <laughs> to see us talk about uh, in the near future. And thanks for listening, everybody. We'll catch you next time. Yeah.